Hi, Shanna Roe Jackson here from Caution Artist at Play. Today I'm going to be playing around with some gouache on some of this Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press Black Paper by Legion. This is their 140 pound and it is a 10 by 14 pad. I will also be using some of these pencils from the number 20 set by Generals Pencil Co. A nice variety here of pastel pencils, charcoal pencils, and some graphite. And I will be using my Holbein gouache for the actual painting itself. You've seen me use this gouache on the channel before. It's my palette I set up there. And I also have a marker of theirs, which has the acrylic ink also by Holbein. And that will be for some of my finer details. Now I am starting to sketch out my fun little composition here. Normally I would not sketch directly on the paper, but whenever I try a new paper, I like to test its durability. And the best way to do that is to do your ugly sketch on it <laughs> and allow yourself to erase and do things like that. Again, I'm trying this paper for the first time. And so I want to see how much it can handle. And for transparency reasons, I do want to mention that these materials were sent to me by the companies. I am now a brand ambassador for Holbein, so I will be teaching in-person workshops for them, Legion Paper and General Pencil Co. This does not change anything that I do on the channel. I'm not being paid to make this video or anything like that. I will just be doing some workshops where I show people how to use these materials. And so I have been trying out a lot of their materials lately or re-familiarizing myself with some of the materials because a lot of them I have used in the past. And my first workshop is actually coming up this month on the 21st at Artisan Craftsman in Portland, Maine at noon. So if any of you are curious and you want to see what it's all about, it is free to attend. And yeah, we'll be there and we'll be talking about a lot of fun materials. And so this is kind of a preview of that. I haven't used these materials all together, so that's another reason why I thought it would be fun to do this project, and I figured I would just film and bring you along for the ride. Look how satisfying this gouache is on this paper. I've been wanting to do a gouache painting on black paper for a long time, and so when I got these materials sent to me, I'm like, oh, this is the perfect opportunity. And this is the cold press paper, but I think that there's one side that seems to be a little bit smoother than the other. And I, I accidentally worked on the smoother side. Now, either side is going to take a ton of layers, but I didn't even realize it at first. It wasn't until after when I went to flip it over and sign it on the back, I realized that one side was a little more textured than the other, which I like because that means you get pretty much two papers in one. And there is that slight texture there still. And as I said, it is definitely taking the layers really well. So this part is going to just be kind of a block in stage. I'm just getting my main color down and then I'm going to come back and do some details after. Now, the one thing about working with yellow on black is that yellow and black make a green color. And so I started putting in, I, I think it was like a lemon yellow or... I can't remember the specific name of the yellow. It's more of my cool yellow and it started to lean a little bit more towards the green side. Again, these are just initial layers though. And with gouache, you can layer pretty well. I did end up doing some thicker brush strokes here, which was not intentional. I do come back in and wash them out a little bit better later because I don't want any cracking. You don't want to do gouache too, too thick. So then I came in and did a little bit of my orange and I am adding water every time I'm working with this and I sprayed my paints. I just was a little bit overzealous and excited and I think I had some juicier brush strokes in there in the beginning than what I wanted. And it's kind of cool though because you can see where the thinner brush stroke is. It adds a little bit to the texture of the petals. Now, one thing when working on a colored paper is you want to figure out how you can use that color to your advantage. Otherwise, why use a colored paper at all? You might as well work on white if you're not going to find some way that it adds to your composition. And so I decided to leave the entire background black, which is unusual for me. I am somebody who likes a full background. If you've seen my work, you know I love working on backgrounds as much as I love working on the subject. 
But in this case, I wanted these to pop. I wanted them, my subject to pop against that background. And so I left it black. That's the fun of having black paper. Or another colored paper in general. And another advantage to it is letting the black do the work for you. Obviously, in places that I have darker shading, I don't need to put gouache. I'm not even using any black gouache. I do come in with some black acrylic ink later on for areas that I want to be darker than the paper. But for regular shadows, I don't have to put anything down. So it's really convenient. It's convenient to work on a paper like this. If all you have is like one pencil, like a colored pencil, you could get a pretty good value range depending on what that color pencil is. Or pastel pencils obviously work great on this as well. You saw that when I was doing my sketch and you will see more pastel pencil work later on in this piece as well. You could have just a white charcoal pencil and do an entire piece that way too. And even though this is a watercolor paper, obviously you can use other materials as well. I often use a hot press watercolor paper when I'm doing colored pencil work anyway. And so this paper works really well for all of it. I obviously am doing a mixed media piece here and I'm very, very pleased with how well this paper held up. I don't have my edges taped and I didn't have to use a ton of water. Like obviously I'm not doing the background, so I'm not doing heavy washes, but I did use quite a bit of water in the parts that have gouache and the paper did not buckle. It stayed pretty well. Obviously it had a little bit of wrinkles when I first put the water down, but it dried really flat. Obviously if I was doing heavier washes though, I would be taping my edges. They also have a 300 pound in this paper as well if you really like the thick paper. I actually have some of that and I'm going to be trying some of the acrylic gouache on it soon and I'm really, really excited about that. I can't wait to see how well the acrylic gouache does on black paper. Now I'm coming in with the details like I mentioned with that. I think this is a two millimeter I believe is the size of the nib and this is a refillable marker by Holbein and it has, like I said, their acrylic ink in it. It's their black acrylic ink. And I'm doing this in areas where I want it to be really, really dark because a black paper is never going to be fully, fully black. Uh, you know, obviously you can see the light hitting it, but you can make it darker with other materials, which is what I did here. And also the acrylic ink is a little bit shinier obviously, than the paper and the gouache, and that will make it seem darker as well. And I liked that contrast. I also put a lot of purple in the body of the bee because I wanted to have that nice contrast in color between the purple and the yellow. Since they are opposite each other on the color wheel, I thought it was a great way to offset all the yellows and greens by putting some purple shadows in there. And using some of my pastel pencils, I put in some details in the wings and in the body as well. Now I'm going to come back to my dandelion. I'm kind of all over the place with this because normally I would do the secondary items first and then do the bee, but I got so excited and it's just so satisfying. Like seeing these colors pop on this paper was so satisfying that... I just couldn't wait to go with it with that B. And I do some adjustments on the face of the B soon because in the reference photo, there is a leg back there, but it's really hard to decipher that. Sometimes something will look natural in a reference photo, but doesn't translate well into an artwork. So don't be afraid to make those adjustments in your artwork if you think it's going to make a better composition or if it's going to make something more clear. So you'll see me do that in a little while. I'll basically kind of straighten out the head a little bit and make it a little bit more obvious. And get rid of the leg that's in the background. Now I'm coming in. Now pastel pencil works really well on top of gouache, especially if you don't have very thick layers of gouache, which as I mentioned before, you don't want to have 
too thick of layers of gouache anyways because of the type of medium it is. It's not acrylic. You're not supposed to be building up too many brush strokes. It's a, you know, water-based media that you want to thin with water and do thinner layers with. So there's no cracking or anything like that. But I digress. <laughs> gouache is matte, which makes it really easy to come on top of it with pastel pencil. Pastel pencil grips to gouache really well. It's one of my favorite ways to do mixed media. And it worked out really well. In this case, I was able to add the curly cues and some more details in the petals of this dandelion. Now I'm coming in and putting some details on that stem, which I was really conscious about the size of the stem when I drew it out and not making it too fat. I'm so bad with stems. I either make them too thin or too fat. And now <laughs> I end up doing so many updates on it that it ends up getting fatter and fatter. I mean, it, she's going to be a little chonky by the end of it. <laughs> But it is what it is. This was not meant to be perfect. I really just wanted to play with the materials, which is, you know, one of my favorite things to do anyway. It's what you see me do on this channel most of the time is playing with materials and seeing how they act with one another. Now I'm putting in the shadows of the leaf and I wanted it to be a little bit more colorful since this, you know, doesn't seem to have a whole lot of different colors in it. You know, we got mostly black, yellow little bit of purple and green. And so I decided to bring a little bit of that purple in and mix it with my green to get some of the shadows and the leaves. And I decided I wanted to bring some blues in too to cool the leaf down a little bit because I have a lot of warm colors in this piece. And then some of the shadows I made a little bit almost muddy so they kind of retreat back into the black background. But I wanted them to not be black so I obviously made it a little bit warmer. Just going back and forth. And I used a little bit of the color on the B for those highest highlights because I had some mixed on my palette. Which, by the way, this palette has held up really well. If you watched my video where I put this gouache palette together, I had heard a lot of issues. Um, a lot of people had issues with that palette and mold. I have had no mold. So there's another win for Holbein right there because from what I had heard other people didn't have issues with mold with their Holbein paints it was other paints they had in their palette and so I'm like well good I'm using Holbein paint so hopefully I don't and I have had no mold in this palette it's been a few months now I think now I have the I think that's the white generals charcoal pencil which is a must-have pencil in any studio for multiple reasons such a versatile pencil. It's great for doing sketches. You can sketch over your acrylics with it if you wanted to sketch something in after you put a background. Like there's so many uses for this pencil, but of course, if you just have a piece of black paper and you have this one pencil, you can create a masterpiece. So there's that. <laughs> and then coming in with another, I think this one must be the green that I have in there. I can't remember the specific color. I love that those pastel pencils have erasers on them and they work really well. Now, they are white erasers, so it it showed up a little bit on this black paper when I did the few erasings that I had to do. But General Pencil Co. makes a ton of erasers and they actually have a black eraser too. So that is something to keep in mind if you're somebody who likes to work on black paper often. There is a black eraser out there that would probably do a little bit better and not show up as much. Going back in to do some more detail with my acrylic ink marker. And then I wanted to add a little bit more of a cooler green in here again because this was leaning really warm. At least in some of the shadow areas I wanted that cooler green. And you know, I'm just bouncing around having a good time. This piece only took me a little over an hour to do and that's including the initial sketch. I decided to sign my name in one of the pastel pencils. Look how well that shows up. This whole thing was just so satisfying and fun. I cannot wait to work on this paper more. I have some of the hot press paper and I want to try and work with some colored pencils on that. Oh, it's just so beautiful. There we go. So now I'm correcting that spot by the bee's head just because I was not liking the way there was a leg there and then there was like, I don't know. And then I tried to put him back in. I'm like, no, no, I don't want to do that either. <laughs> this paper is taking a beating though. So then I kind of washed out because the 
the acrylic ink was a little bit wet still, I was able to wet it and lift a lot of it. Sorry, you can probably hear my rooster out there. And then I was able to paint back over it with that nice opaque gouache. And then you can't even tell. And I mean, the head isn't going to be perfect anyways. It's really hard to find the detail in the reference photo because of the dandelion petals. And so, again, I'm not here for photorealism this time, clearly, with this black background and everything else. I just wanted to have a fun, satisfying image on some black paper. I really love the, again, the way those pencils felt on the gouache. So here is my final piece. I hope that you enjoyed watching this and that you had fun with me while I explained my process. This is what it looks like scanned in, obviously a little bit darker once it's scanned in, but man, those colors really pop. This was super satisfying. So let me know, have you ever worked on black paper? What is your favorite medium to use on black paper? And would you ever try gouache on black paper if you haven't before? All right. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week. You have a fantastic day. Bye.